Hi everybody, Jonathan here, and today's video is all going to be focused on real-time rendering using Twin Motion with AppDirects as well. Now, if you've seen my first part of this webinar series, um, you'll already understand how great AppDirects is for the real-time rendering, but Twin Motion will promise to take your renders to the next level. There's really amazing libraries, it's got fantastic rendering quality, also you can animate pretty much everything as well. So be prepared to be blown away by the workflow that Twinmotion offers uh, for VectorWitch users in particular, but also any other software that you might be using with Twinmotion. So I really hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching as ever. Okay, so for the next part of this presentation, we're going to be talking about Twinmotion as a real-time rendering choice for use with Vectorworks. And I'm going to demonstrate a project that I did for an eco home a number of years ago. A really nice little project that I really enjoyed working on. So I'm going to click on that hyperlink and let's just focus on the project in Vectorworks for a second before we move on to the benefits of using Twinmotion on this project. So it's a really nice little project, as you can see. Um, what I've actually got here is the building model and the site. Now I've kept those models separate. If I did want to see the actual kind of model of the building itself, I could go to Window and you'll notice that here under Referenced Files is the actual Eco Home itself. So as you can see, it's perfectly possible to get some very nice renderings directly from Vectorworks without really needing any other rendering software. However, there are times when you just want to take it to the next level of quality and this is where Twin Motion will come in. So let's take a look at this. So I'm just going to revert back to my site file. So uh, just briefly before I hop into Twin Motion, let me just show you the uh, drawings for the site file. So in this file, the building was referenced in, as you can see, as a referenced viewport. So that links to the other project where I actually developed the, the model itself. What's really nice about this is clearly I can sort of set the project in its context with things like the um, site in the background and these sort of nice kind of contextual viewports I think work really, really well for this kind of material. So these are kind of drawings that Vectorworks really excels at. And you know, definitely I love drawings like this where we do sort of things like exploded isometrics and stuff like this. These are really uh, explanatory drawings that show the internal external relationships of architectural space and also things like the annotations as well. So look, Vectorworks is just unbeatable for the documentation side. However, when we want to export our model, all we need to do, so let me just go over to my model itself. And when I'm actually ready, I'll go to my file menu and export. Now again, there's two different file formats you can choose. Um, I'm still a big fan of the reliable Cinema 4D export, and that's the one I would recommend that you try to begin with. There is also the Datasmith export, and the good thing about Datasmith, this will allow you, if you did want to, to go into, say, Unreal Engine, um, even beyond Twin Motion as well. But let's stick to the Twin Motion format first. So Cinema 4D is a really good format. All we need to do is basically select all of the options. Um, we don't really need to export planar objects. That's things like text and sections. Everything else I'm going to go for. So I'll click export. Basically, then it will ask me where to export that file. So let me just go off to my uh, sort of documentation stage and I'll create a new folder called Twin Motion. So let's export into there. You'll notice that it's actually pretty quick, the export process, and um, it just kind of takes a few seconds down here. And then once we've done that, we're ready to import the model directly into Twin Motion itself. Okay, so here we are with our Twin Motion home screen. And you notice that there's a few different sort of templates and things that we can actually launch. And um, one of the templates that I really like to use is this day and night skies one. I find this a really good starting point because it has lots of really nice ready-made HDRI backgrounds and skies and things like this already built in. So we're just gonna open this one up. You'll notice without me doing anything at all, I can click on media and basically I can kind of run through some of these pre-made sort of medias um, with this sort of generic ground, but this lovely sort of HDRI skies. So I'm gonna go with this to begin with. Okay, so to bring our model into uh, Twin Motion from Vectorworks, all we need to do is click the import tab, click on the plus sign. And if we had used the Twin Motion direct link, we could actually see the direct link would feature here and we could bring it in. But as I exported manually, I'm just gonna click open and go and select that file that I exported a second ago. 
Um, so you'll notice we've got our project here, let's just pop down to our folder. And basically it's 98 megabytes, so not that big. You will notice that all the different textures from Vectorits have also been exported as well. So quite a nice little tip there. Um, basically, let's also keep the hierarchy. This is quite important so that Twinmotion recognizes all of the various objects that you're bringing in and it means that you can amend them as required. So it doesn't take too long to uh, import. Sometimes you get a couple of kind of conflicts and materials. Don't worry about that too much. Click OK and let's go for it. Brilliant. OK, so you can see that the model has landed. Now, sometimes it doesn't always land uh, sort of exactly where you want it. Maybe it lands in the middle of the file or somewhere else. But you can see I can basically navigate out a little bit and we've got this lovely view of our building. And basically when I'm ready, I'll go and choose to kind of click the view that I've actually set up here and just click update. OK, then the next thing I would probably do in Twinmotion is want to replace things like these trees. So you'll notice that if you do click on the trees, all of the uh, random owl plants that I was using in Vectorwitz have actually come through. Now a great little tip here is if I go and type in render as a filter, basically what it will do is select all of the random owl plants that I'd used in Vectorworks. And basically I should be able to scroll right to the top and the bottom and select everything. Okay, now I know there's some different sizes and things of trees in here, but just for the sake of speed, what I'll do is I'll right click and I can go to replace. So this allows me to basically get a Dropbox where I can actually drag in some actual trees that I do want to use. Now, I've got to be a bit careful because I've certainly got a lot of trees here. So I might drag in uh, just a sort of classic linden tree. Okay, that will do for now. And maybe a little bit more variety. Let's drag in um, another little tree. Let's go for silver birch. I think I have one more as well. Let's try a sweet birch and we'll just drag that in. And when you're ready, watch this, it's pretty awesome. When I click start replace, Basically, it now replaces all of those plants and things uh, that I just selected with my new trees. Um, you'll notice that I've got the entire model loaded in here. And what I can do is go to Ambience. So for this particular view, what I'm going to do is slide up my Ambience a little bit higher and basically scroll through uh, things like Exposure. You'll notice I can brighten this up a bit. I've also got things like Auto Exposure, which is actually very useful. Um, but you'll notice that the time of day is currently greyed out and I can't change this. That's because I've actually got an HDRI under the HDRI section because I chose one of the uh, day and night skies template images, which makes sense. So if you do want to rotate the HDRI, all you need to do basically is just start to rotate that lovely lighting. And you can see on real time it's sort of changing through and we rotate. So what I really love with Twinmotion, you can kind of just search for that optimum lighting and that nice sort of background. You know, look at that lovely sky. Let's just move back a little bit more to frame that view up. And basically I can also just boost up the intensity of the HDRI a little bit more as well. So lots and lots of really cool uh, features with the um, rotation of that HDRI as well. Now, if you do want to then, the next thing that you might want to do is basically save that view. So I can always click on plus to generate a brand new view. Of course, that will generate down at the bottom here. So often I kind of drag that back up and just sort of put it side by side. So what this means is I like the way that I can click on a couple of comparable views, uh, rotate the sort of HDRI on that view, and just sort of see which lighting and sort of setup I prefer. Uh, a bit like a photographer taking several images, I guess. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, the next thing I might decide to do um, is do a little bit of vegetation painting. So to do this, I'm going to go to my Populate panel. I'm going to go to Foliage and Paint. And all we need to do now is basically go back to our vegetation and bring in some grass, for example. So I'm going to bring in some lawn in here. And I think I'll just stick to lawn and we'll have a few clovers. Let's pretend the grass is a little bit wild and maybe even a few flowers as well. Okay, so let's select these three items. We'll go to the brush. You'll notice I've got a pretty big brush at the moment. So we'll get the diameter down a little bit here. And I should be able to pretty much just start to kind of paint um, and sort of spray in some kind of nice sort of flowery kind of wild meadow type thing. 
and that looks really really cool now if you do want to you can also get the rubber and maybe there'd be a little path kind of running down the middle that I could rub out so it's very easy um, and if I kind of zoom in a bit more detail you'll see sort of how much detail twin motion can create very rapidly now the flowers are definitely a bit dense so I'm going to kind of take the density of those down a bit but I'm going to actually increase the density of just the regular grass so if I do want to, I can even drag in additional items, things like those red flowers. You notice they start to appear. So it's very editable, uh, things like the landscape there. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's say that I've done a bit of work on the planting and things. Um, the next thing that I probably might want to do is bring the image to life a bit more. So to do this, I'm going to go to my animated humans or posed people. Twinmotion has a really good selection of people. And basically all you need to do let's go up a little bit higher so i can see how this works is basically drag these animated humans into the model okay and sort of put them into a position the nice thing about this is you can kind of bring the model to life as you can see and it's very easy to create a sort of nice little kind of interactive scene um, i really quite like the animated people in the way that you can basically change what they're doing and so i have them sat down and posing um, you know, doing various activities as well, just to bring the project to life. Now, post people are great, but if you do want super high quality people, I definitely recommend you go uh, to the posed people, sorry, not the animated people, and drag these in. Now, the reason I use these is for still images. So when I'm quite close up, you'll see if I go zoom in a bit, they're definitely a, a level above in terms of sort of quality. So these kind of really bring the model to life. And again, you can kind of like pose them around quite straightforwardly, but you can't change the clothes or what they're actually doing. So very, very nice. Okay, so we're moving on quite nicely. Just a little dialogue here that I'm just going to suppress. Probably the next thing I would do to start kind of making the image look good is go again to my ambience, and I might try out a few different sort of weather conditions. So let's drop down to eye level using M for pedestrian mode, just to get me down to that eye level. Now that I'm down at this level, um, I probably just want to click onto my landscape again, just selecting my painted vegetation. And now I can see that, you know, I just need to kind of paint a bit more in here and in this sort of foreground. So that's the thing with Twinmotion, you just sort of keep iterating and keep working on the project as required. And we'll just sort of drag a little bit more of a nice sort of path down the middle there. Great, okay, that's just looking good. So back to our ambience then. In our ambience, um, let's just drop down one more time and let's update that image. So let me just, just update that perspective a little bit more and we'll click to update. There we go. Fantastic. Right, I'm pretty happy, um, but I do want to make some changes here. So I want to go up to the ambience and I want to scroll down to the weather. So let's change the weather. Now the weather is really nice in twin motion. So once I get down towards the sort of rainy section, You'll notice that some sort of water appears on the landscape um, and here we can kind of slide through and sort of go to different conditions even sort of very sort of snowy landscapes as well so it's definitely fun to sort of try out your model in different conditions um, let's go a little bit kind of like rainy but a little bit sort of post rain so it's sort of drying up a little bit Okay, so I've got a nice little view from the front and when I'm ready, all I need to do is basically go to the export tab down at the bottom. When I click here, you'll notice that I can basically then go over to my images and add those, uh, the ones that I want to. So we'll click plus. Let's add some of the renderings that we've kind of set up here. You see them all listed, so it's really, really easy to basically batch render. Um, you can also do videos, panoramics, and also cloud renderings as well. But, you know, we won't be getting into that in today's webinar. So when we're ready, we'll go down and simply click on export. And one of the beauties of Twinmotion is, of course, the speed of rendering. Depending on what GPU you've got, um, I'm on an Apple Mac at the moment with this particular webinar. Um, I also use an RTX uh, 4070 Ti on my PC, and I have to say that absolutely flies. So the rendering speed, very, very good, and the high quality renders uh, will be look even better when you actually get out the final images. I'm just going to skip over to some uh, ready rendered animations of the final project that I did for planning and I have to say these came out really really well so you can see that here is a nice sort of uh, isometric view rotating around in an aerial sort of fashion 
But it's a really great way to explain the project uh, in its sort of context with a bit of background as well. You've got really nice sort of lighting and things like the trees and the plants, I think you all agree, really make the rendering stand out. The other thing I really love about Twin Motion is the level of detail. You know, look at all these blades of grass and the flowers, things like this. Um, we can also do things like change the time of day and animate the sky moving. As you can see, the shadows moving around a little bit in this view as well. But also, there's a really nice sort of transition as we move from the external space uh, through to the interiors. And you can see I haven't done a lot, but I've just added a little bit of lighting inside the project. Got a bit of sort of shine and glossiness to that floor. And here again, we're just sort of panning across very slowly. Uh, with a little bit of things like artwork on the walls and you know laptops on the table those sort of library objects in twin motion really bring the image to life very rapidly so the great thing with twin motion not only does it work with a really wide range of 3d modeling software it's totally cross-platform for mac and windows just like vectorworks is and if you've got a windows machine with an rtx graphics card you can get even higher levels of quality as well now there's many other features that twin motion has but i do hope you've had a brief overview in this little webinar on some of the strengths. So reach out to me if you'd like to know more about Twinmotion or get more detailed Twinmotion training, and I'll be very glad to help. 